Hey everyone, this is Stealth. Welcome back to Motor Gear Solid. Still working on the Virago 250. I'm trying to get this bike finished as quick as possible without rushing a little too much where it's, you know, crappy. Because I have no bike to ride right now, so I want to get a bike and show you guys what this thing looks like when it's done. Got a part that arrived. Something awesome. It is the new fuel tap. This has been upgraded to metal from the older one, so guys want to upgrade them I recommend doing it and it's almost like there's like a filter here on its own I'm just concerned that fuel is not going to go through there or just gonna build up so much that no fuel is gonna ever enter again because of dirt and stuff so I don't know rinse the tank with soap and water now I'm just drying the leftover water inside the tanks because it needs to be completely dry before I seal it So I just have a heat gun and I let that run until all the water is dry. Alright, so the tank is fully dry. I just checked. Uh, the heat gun really dried it really quick. So keep, you can use that or a hair dryer, whatever works for you. So now to seal it, I'm going to use this Pour 15 fuel tank sealer. So basically, you just dump the whole thing in there and then you just rotate the tank around so that way the the solution you know coats the entire inside and then when you're done uh, just leave it for 96 hours and it should fully cure so I sealed the bottom of the tank and then once I pour this in I'm gonna seal the top and then I'm gonna start rotating it around I'm just using this uh, aluminum tape because it makes a really good seal I have used it on the bottom as well So all you do is just rotate the tank, make sure that the sealant finds its way everywhere. So the tank has been sealed. Hopefully you guys can see in there. I'm trying to focus. There we go. Yeah, so it looks brand new in there. So I got a new battery. I want to test out all the electronics. I'm not going to start it, but obviously because there's no oil or fuel, but... I want to test out all the things like the signals and stuff to make sure everything's working, the wiring harness, cane tire. Man, these guys uh, don't even wipe off the stuff. I'm gonna wipe it off, put it in the bike, and see if it works. Okay, since the last video, I installed these bullet style turn signals. They look really good. They suit the bike perfectly. They don't stick out too far. They're actually very good quality. They're actually made of metal. So, and uh, yeah, they light up pretty nice. So I have the battery in, I have the ignition switch in, I have uh, the aftermarket tail light I'm going to use. I wired up the front signals. I didn't put the running light because I think my last Virago gave me issues. I see if I have a workaround to get that running. I put the stock tail lights on because I think there's an issue with the aftermarket ones working with this setup. I tried, uh, but it just didn't work for some reason. Okay, so I turned it on. Tail light running light is on, which is good, that's what I want. That's the front brake, back brake, this is the foot brake, left signal works on there, even the headlight, high beam works, speedometer light works, horn works, right turn signal works, let's check the front, left works, okay, so there's nothing wrong with the wiring harness or anything like that, or the switches or anything. It's mainly probably the aftermarket lights. They just don't work with the setup. So I have to figure out how to get them to work. Because I don't want to use these old school um, signals. Because I like the look of the front ones. Maybe it's because they're LED. I'm not sure. Maybe I can get some bulb ones. Maybe that should solve the problem. Yeah, I think I'm going to get change these out. I might even change out the front ones. Just go back to the bulb. But as long as they have this look, I don't care. Because this looks really cool. I want them for the front and the back. Something else arrived, the uh, inner tube for the rear tire, so now I can actually install the new tire onto the rim, I'm going to give it a shot and see how it goes. Alright, good news, I got the tire on. The trick is to use Windex because it will give it some lubrication to slide it on, and then also uh, it will evaporate, so you don't have to worry about it lingering around. Yeah, it's actually a lot easier to put the tire on than take the tire off. Excited because... Now I can actually paint the wheel, 
put the sprocket on, put the brake on, put it back on the bike with the chain. Okay, so the back wheel is painted. I've just been using this rust paint that I use for other stuff. And to clear coat it, I use this. This actually works really well with that rust paint. It gives it a nice uh, protective shell. I tested it on, um, on this headlight uh, cover bracket plate thing and the uh, drum brake cover. It's like really good. It doesn't react weird with this paint. So I use a couple coats. So I'm gonna let the wheels dry and then I'm gonna put them back on the bike. All right, so I got the front tire off. You can see the inside a lot of rust. I'm gonna have to hit it with the, the wire wheel. Just take it off before I put the new tire on. I don't want this all underneath. Okay, so I sanded down the inside with the wire wheel. Much better than before. So now I can put on the rubber lip thing and then put the new tire on. While I was waiting for the paint on the wheels to dry, I installed the front sprocket. This is a 17th tooth sprocket. Um, it's an upgrade from stock. I think the stock is 16, I can't remember, but I did this on my last Virago. I also went ahead and installed the rear sprocket on the rear wheel. So this is a 40 tooth sprocket to go with the 17 tooth front sprocket. I did this on the my previous Frago. This is something that a lot of people do, they change the sprockets. The reason is it's to get taller gearing. So that way first gear isn't so short. And also on the highway you don't rev as high and it's better for getting, uh, it's better for top end and top speed. So I got the brake lever on, the brake shoe cover. And I got the new brake shoes installed. So I kind of matched the angle that it originally was when I took it off. So everything lined up really well. Good thing I took footage and some pictures. Also, don't forget this tab underneath also needs to line up with the direction of this lever here. Okay, I have the wheel installed again. Everything's hooked up. So now let's test the brakes out. Let's do like the price is right. Ooh, big money, big money. Bam. Really nice, really smooth. You don't hear any grinding. The brakes aren't making contact until I press the lever. Perfect. And the tension on the lever is really nice, really smooth. All right, so the bike's looking good. It's really coming together. Especially with the tire on. Okay, so next I'm gonna try to prep the fuel tank and then paint it up. Okay, so I'm working on the fuel tank. Sanded it down. I had to use 60 grit for the Virago decal to get it off so it was like a sticker under the clear coat so it took a while. And then I went back over it with some 120. Now I'm gonna wipe off all the dust with some alcohol and see where I'm at. And maybe give it a more finer sand and prime. Okay so the gas tank is uh, almost ready to paint. I painted the inside because it was rusted. So I used the wire brush on the drill took out all the surface rust and then use some uh, rust reformer and direct to metal paint. Okay, here's the gas tank. It's been all primed up. I use this uh, primer here for the paint. I'm going with Dupacolor Perfect Match. It's like a automotive touch-up paint, but you get quite a bit in it. I'm using Storm Gray Metallic. I'm going for like a gunmetal color just to offset the black. Okay, here's an update on the tank. So I put two coats of the clear coat. Uh, same brand, using the uh, Dupacolor Perfect Match Protective Clear Coat Finish just to go with the paint so it doesn't react weird or anything. It's coming out really nice. Like it's going on super nice. The color uh, looks way better in person because there's a lot of glare, but I'll do a video outside when the bike's done. You guys can appreciate the color more. But this, this tone is really nice. It will go with the black so well. Okay, so the tank is done. The clear coat is all dry so I figure I'd mount it onto the bike it's not screwed down or anything just wanted to see what it looks like oh my god it looks amazing look at that it goes so well with the black and the silver color scheme this thing's gonna look so good with the fenders and everything and all I need to do is paint that wheel over there but I gotta get it uh, still need the tube installed and stuff so I'll do that so I put some decals on the bike I have this uh, star and wings I think it looks really cool with black with the gunmetal so I laid it on and then I clear coated over it a couple coats. I put one on each side. I lined it up pretty well just by eye. It was nuts. Yeah, it looks good. 
Yeah, these decals are really cool. You just like lay it on and then you rub down the actual decal part and then peel off the plastic and it'll just leave like the bits behind so there's no like see-through edge like a water slide decal kind of leaves. This is like a legit real sticker but already cut for you. Amazing. I have the back fender here. I'm gonna get this ready next. But first I have to fit on this new signal light. It's LED. So I want to put it right here. Just to cover up all these holes. I'm not going to fill these in or anything. I'm actually going to keep these. It's actually like a cushion for the license plate holder. Once I fit it in there. Alright, so I drilled the holes for the fender. I think that's a good spot. And then the plate will go right under. But yeah, that works. I think a car behind me will definitely see that. Especially the car is a, it's much higher than the bike, so they'll definitely see it. It's actually a good spot for it. I soldered the original connectors. Because those ones that come with it are really cheap and flimsy, so these are good. And then I just match it up to the original colors. No issues, no hassle. Alright, so here's the back fender. All prepped for paint. I primed it. And I sanded down the rust spots on the inside as well. And added some reformer and clear coat. <laughs> That's going to get messed up and dirty, but at least the rust has been contained and sanded off. The outside didn't have any rust, which was good. So it's time to paint it. Same color as the tank. Alright, so back to the tank. The uh, fuel tap is in. So use some hex head, small bolts. That way getting it off will be a lot easier than those Japanese Phillips. It was a nightmare to get them off, so this should be a lot easier. So if I or whoever owns this bike in the future needs to change it again, it's no problem. the uh, inner guard of the fender you can see a lot of rust just wear on the inside so I'm just gonna use the wire brush take off as much as I can and just give it a quick coat of rust paint all right so here's the rear fender painted up and clear coated and so just wanted to show you in some better light that paint is amazing I re highly recommend it so here's the uh, inner guard painted it up with rust paint clear coated it but, uh, so I'm just gonna let that dry overnight before I install it. Like the front fender and the side panels are painted, clear coated. They turn out really nice. And as for this, I reinstalled the under panel there. And I also installed the rear tail light with the plate mount. I think it looks really cool. All I need to do is uh, install the rear signals and I can put the whole fender back on the bike along with these parts too. All right, so the front wheel, I uh, got the front wheel tube installed from Augment. Motors something something I forget the name Augment Motorcycle Shop Incorporated Deluxe Edition Yeah so I got it installed and I painted it when when I got back I painted it and clear coated it so it's gonna let that drive overnight come back tomorrow install it put the brake disc on and everything should be good to go since I got the 42 sprocket in the back and the 17 in the front you need a chain so that way it's not too long and not too short so I got 520 with 112 lengths so if you have 17 and 40 for your sprockets. This chain, 520, 112, will fit perfectly with a lot of room for adjustment as the chain stretches and wears out. I got the O-ring style, so it has the clip. Really cool, really easy to, to install. All right, I got the chain installed. It took a little while because I had to get this wheel forward a bit. I, like, I love these, they're really easy to install. I have a video uh, covering a motorcycle chain on a CBR250R. It's the exact same thing. 100% same way I put it on this bike I put it on that bike the chain adjuster is exactly the same everything's the same so if you want to check out that video click on the top right I'll take you to that and you can see how I put the chain on that bike same as this bike exactly the same all right so I reinstalled the side panels now that they're all painted I also reinstalled the front fender yeah I was debating uh, leaving them black I've seen some Rogos where they were black and the, the bike was painted a different color but it looks so good just to have more contrast I just had I had just about enough paint to finish up these side panels yeah, so I made the right call all right so I was able to put back this cover I was having a problem because I didn't actually have the screw when I bought the bike the guy gave me the cover but he didn't have the screws so I went to the hardware store and I bought a couple of these and this is the one that fit so luckily it doesn't uh, you know it's not a crucial engine 
uh, screw is just a cover plate so it worked out I also ins reinstalled the chain guard cover man it's loud out there everyone's leaving work all right moving on all right so I had to remove I think I mentioned earlier I had to remove these signals because the LEDs are getting really complicated to run so uh, they were just being all screwy with the, the rear signals and stuff and just just a hassle so so I ended up ordering a similar style bullet style signal but with the, the halogen bulb so this will give me no issues before I can install the signal lights I had to extend the wire because the wire that comes with the lights is so short so so I used the, the stock connectors from the last Farago I had I still had those left over I knew I'd use them one day so always keep stuff from other bikes if you can that way they'll just plug right in I don't have to like squeeze the, the the other connector so that way it fits but these will fit right in so I got the rear fender back on the bike everything is connected this thing's looking awesome so that's good tail light is on I need a running light the uh, signals are in let's test them out left is on left right is on right the indicator is flashing perfect now to do the front signals Alright, so I installed the front signals, probably wondering, hey, why don't you install those cool lights like you did in the back? Problem is, this has to pass a safety inspection first. If I ride it, I need to get a safety. So these need to be running lights. So right turn signal works. Left turn signal works. High beam, that works. So for now, I need to leave these on. I know it's kind of ugly, but I'll have to do. Till I get the safety inspection. All right, I got the front tire on. So this bike is looking really cool. Looking awesome. Still need to put the exhaust, but first I'm gonna put some motor oil because it needs oil before I can start it. 1.6 liters, that's what you have to put if you have an empty engine and you're changing the oil filter. So keep that in mind, 1.6. Oil here and my measuring cup. So I'm gonna measure a liter and then pour it in and then measure 600 and then pour that in. So now that that's done, I can finally install exhaust oh yeah got some slash cut exhaust pipes they have baffles inside I'll be leaving the baffles in I had the you know these kind of pipes they're different these are a different style than the ones I had on my previous Frago in my personal opinion they sound better with the baffles it's good to have a little bit of back pressure with your exhaust so it kind of gives you that plus it sounds better to me I don't know what when they're like no baffles they just sound like a pipe like a Something like hitting a metal pipe, like bang, 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 bang. With the baffles, it has like the perfect middle ground kind of sound. So I'll be leaving the baffles in. They're really nice. Let's see what they look like on the bike. So I got the exhaust pipes installed. Took a little bit of work to kind of bend them and get them in there. Got to make sure that the got to make sure that the pipes are flush from the opening. Don't just like half-ass it. Just really make sure it's in there. And then these uh, these brackets. Bend them as much as you can, just so it looks nice and lined up. It's not all wonky. All right, so I need to install the caliper again. This is my old caliper. Um, when I got the bike, it uh, it kind of worked, but the pistons just failed after a while. Probably because the fluid never changed and it just seized up and everything. So I can't use these. So I ordered a new caliper. This one's in much better condition. I just cleaned it up a bit with some uh, scotch brake pads that's good as new and just arrived just in time the bike's uh, last piece I just need to connect it to the steel fuel lines and then fill it up with fluid but first I'm going to install some brand new front brake pads alright so I got the new brake caliper on well new used um, so I just zip tied the wires together with the speedometer cable that looks nice and neat it sticks out like that but I can't find the uh, I can't find the reflector that actually holds it like that. That's okay. It's not too much of an eyesore. You're not really going to notice it. I'm going to run some brake fluid through the system. So whenever you're doing this, always, you know, some paper towel or something. Because this will, like, eat away at paint and stuff. I'm going to put a bit more, but this is just for now. Alright, so I'm just about finished the bike, but I'm having issues with the brake uh, master cylinder. on. There's not enough pressure to close the caliper onto the disc and stop the wheel from moving. 
So I figure maybe I'll just do a rebuild kit or just get a whole new part from Yamaha, but it's going to take a long time. I kind of just want to finish this bike. Uh, there's other ways to get it to work without needing, you know, the exact part. So I got this aftermarket master cylinder. It's for Yamahas. It's pretty much the exact same setup. The only thing that's different is the connectors there for the brake sensor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these spade connectors and I'm going to rig the uh, OEM one to connect to the aftermarket one. I already opened it up the other day I saw inside it's just basically two wires and its own proprietary connector so I could just rig that onto the new uh, master cylinder. It's, it'll be fine. So the new master cylinder is in. Um, this lever I couldn't change it out with the original one. It's kind of like a sport bike one with a very sensitive sensor. I like that it's just I can't put the silver one in so I'm gonna have to find a black one for that or either paint that one or something. So I attached it. I rebled the brakes. Okay, so let's test this out. Boom. Boom. The brake pads are new, so you're going to hear a little bit of metal sound from the brake pads. But these work really good. Yeah, there's definitely progressive. You can definitely do progressive brake pressure, so it works. Last thing I'd do for the brake is make a new connection for the sensor. So I just used some spade connectors and I rewired it to the new master cylinder. That works. Awesome. See? Sometimes you can't be scared of stuff. There's always a way. Alright, just a random thing that's going on with the bike which I resolved uh, just recently. Okay, so I wanted to test if the bike cranked over. I'm not starting it because there's no fuel. I just want to see, you know, everything works. Starter motor or everything. So every time I would press the button here, the lights would just like flicker on and off and nothing would happen. So I asked some people they were giving me a bunch of ideas, but in my gut, I always knew something wrong with the starter relay. Something to do with it, I just had a hunch. It was either that or this switch. So maybe I, you know, it's dirty or whatever, the contact points. So I opened it up, cleaned all the contact points with, you know, uh, microfiber, what's it called, scotch Bright, and, you know, cleaning all the dust out. And, okay, so I tried it and then still didn't work. And then I went to the starter relay, which is somewhere in there. Sorry, guys, you can't really see it, but yeah. So what happened was, it was backwards. The contact points were backwards. Positive was on negative, negative was on positive. The previous owner connected them wrong, and then I removed it. And then based on my footage, I put them back the way I removed it. And I removed them wrong, and I put them back on wrong. So it's his fault, and then, like a dummy, I put them back on wrong. But then I thought, oh, maybe they go the other way. So I tried them the other way, and then it worked. And then I watched another video, and it confirmed that's how they're supposed to go. And it worked. So it definitely starts up, it cranks up. Show you guys you guys listen to it. Just cranking up dry. So that's the solution. So remember, check all your connectors and contact points and make sure everything is connected properly. So human error, but I went with the simplest solution before I took this whole bike apart to figure it out. You know, you don't want a short or bad wiring or anything like that on your wiring harness. So yeah. Always find the easiest option first before you go nuts and make it overcomplicated. Now for the moment of truth. I was going to give you an update on the Virago project. You're probably wondering why is it open again. So I tried to start it and there was a bit of a leak and I know exactly where it was from. The gasket. So I ordered one from Partzilla and it's going to come express and I'm just going to 
put that in and uh, it should be fine. It was leaking from right under the bottom part of the gasket. So. This is the gasket. Like, what is this? Paper? Like, this is garbage. I should have never put this in my motorcycle. Alright, everything's back on. I used this uh, Ultimate Black JB Weld gasket maker. It's a uh, silicone. So a lot of good reviews, a lot of people use it for their motorcycles and their crankcases, valve covers, things like that. So I'm going to give it 24 hours, let it cure fully, come back tomorrow, fill it up with some oil again, if it's all drained out. I'll start it up again outside, do a walk around, and then test ride it. And hopefully it doesn't leak oil and it's good to go. Couldn't wait for the gasket, part still is just sitting on their butt with this gasket, they will not ship it, so I had to do it with other means and a lot of people say it's good so it should be fine.